Hello friends, this is Himanshu Jain from the Wall Street School. We are an approved training partner of GAAP and we have been teaching FRM for many years now. We get many queries from the students who want to appear for the FRM examination but before appearing for the exam, they want many of their critical doubts cleared before they actually appear. Right? What is FRM all about? What is the scope of FRM? What is the salaries that we can expect after the FRM examination? What is the syllabus? How is the exam? How is the exam pattern? Is it easy? Is it difficult? How can we crack it? All these questions and many more we'll try to address in this video. Do watch. Okay, let us start. Firstly, I'll be introducing you to FRM very briefly. Then I'll be discussing the eligibility criteria, the fees that you have to pay, the curriculum that you have to study, the exam pattern, what are the job profiles in which you can enter, who are the top employers in India as well as globally, and the salary that you can expect. Firstly, let me introduce you very briefly to FRM. See, if you are planning to make your career in financial risk management, then this course is your go-to. It is the gold standard for risk professionals around the globe. It is issued by GARP Institute, that is Global Association of Risk Professional. It is perhaps the most recognized institute that is advancing studies in risk management. After 2008 housing fiasco, housing crisis in US, it is continuously in demand in every major bank around the world and in every major business around the world because now they are readily accepting the importance of risk management in any domain. And perhaps this FRM curriculum creates the only professionals that can save us from next big financial crisis. Now let us talk about eligibility criteria for FRM exams. There is a good news for you that there is no minimum eligibility to register for FRM. You can register for FRM even after completing your class 12th. But this is generally not recommended. I'll tell you why. But the point here is that as and when you feel that you are mature enough to make a career in risk management, you can go and register for FRM part 1 exams. Now, why not to register immediately after class 12th? See, in India at least, the job market is that you need minimum graduation level certification, graduation level qualification to apply for any job, to be eligible for any job. Suppose after clearing your 12th exams, within one year, you are able to clear part one and part two of your FRM exams. You have your FRM certifications, but you do not have your graduation. So in that case, it will be very difficult for you to land up with a job. So it is my recommendation to every candidate who join us that you should join FRM in the last year of your graduation. See, when you join FRM in the last year of your graduation, what happens is within one year, you clear your FRM and you have your graduation certificate. So when you go and apply for jobs, you have edge over other candidates who have not pursued this FRM as well as every like concept that you have learned is fresh in your mind that you will be applying on your job. So it becomes relatively easy for a fresh graduate to get a job, right? Then what about FRM charter holder? So for that you need minimum two years of experience in risk domain and you have to apply for this charter holder within five years of completing your FRM part two exams, right? Once you have cleared your FRM part one, part two exams, gain your relevant two years experience and then apply for FRM charter holder. If in case you already have this experience, you can apply to institute directly, right? Now let us talk about FRM fees, the fees that you have to pay. Firstly, let us talk about part one fees. So exams are conducted twice in a year in the month of May as well as in the month of November. 
so let us talk about firstly month of may so registration opens for the exams that that will be held in the month of may from 1st of december to 31st of january if you register within this period the fees you have to pay is 825 dollars this is called as early bird registration this 825 dollars is inclusive of your 400 dollars enrollment fees that you have to pay only one time right then if you register after 31st january that is between 1st february to 29th february it is called as standard registration and you need to pay a bit higher 950 dollars this 950 dollars is your exam fees plus your enrollment fees and if in case you are not able to register up to 29th february frm the institute garb gives you one more option to register late the registration for late starts from 1st of march and ends on 15th of april in that case you are required to pay a bit higher 1125 dollars and this also is including your enrollment fees right and after 15th of april the registration closes and on third saturday in uh, saturday of the month of may your exams are conducted right and for the month of november like for november attempt the exam timeline and for the november attempt the timeline is like this your registration starts from 1st of may to 31st july this is called as early bird and the fees is same just like here that means it is exam fees plus your enrollment fees then if in case you are not able to register up to 31st july if you register between 1st august to 31st august your exam fees will be 950 dollars it is called a standard registration if in case you are not able to register up to 31st august also you can register between 1st september to 15th october called as late registration in that case you are required to pay a bit higher 1125 dollars and after 15th of october you cannot register for november attempt right this is the timeline for part one the fees for part one for part two let us discuss the fees the timeline remains the same december to january feb and march to april 15 but the fees is relatively low because you have already enrolled you have to only pay for exam fees now so 350 dollars if you register early 475 dollars if you register in the month of uh, february for may attempt and in the month of march and april if you register your exam fees will be 650 dollars and in the month of may you will be able to appear for your exams suppose if you are planning to appear in the month of november so your timeline will be from 1st may to 31st july early bird that is exam fees of 350 dollars then from 1st august to 31st august exam fees of 475 dollars called as standard registration and then from 1st september to 15th september you will be paying 650 dollars called as late registration and after 15th of october you cannot register for november attempt i hope the fees is really clear so as per current uh, conversion rate that is approximately 75 dollars if you register early for every exam if you register early for part one as well as part two that means you pay 825 dollars for part one and you pay 350 dollars for appearing part two exams it will add up to 825 plus 350 that is double one seven five if i multiply this by 75 your total registration fees will be somewhere around eighty eight thousand uh, total exam fees will be rather somewhere around eighty eight thousand so approximately ninety thousand you can complete your frm if you register early if you delay it the fees increases to around one lakh thirty five thousand for part one as well as part two right so it is relatively inexpensive course if we compare it with say MBA programs, if we compare it with CFA, it is relatively an inexpensive course, right? Now let us talk about the curriculum for FRM part one as well as part two. So for part one, you are required to go through four books. 
The topics covered in those four books are number one, foundations of risk management. It is more or less theoretical in nature other than few chapters. Then you have quantitative analysis. This is not maths. This is statistics, right? So it is hardcore statistics. So if you love numbers, I think this course is for you. Then you have financial markets and products. There you will be talking about bonds, options, equities and all. And then valuations and risk management. So here majorly you will be talking about VAR, options, bond management and all. Right. This is your part one curriculum for part two. You will be required to study seven modules and each module will be addressing one specific category of risk. So you will be studying about market risk, credit risk, operational risk, liquidity and treasury risk, risk management and investments and current issues in financial markets. Right. These are the seven modules that you have to study. And this is the module that updates itself very frequently. The curriculum for remaining modules more or less remains the chain uh, remains the same, though it has gone drastic changes in 2020, but still more or less it remains the same over the years, but this keeps on changing. Now let us talk about the exam pattern. So your exams, whether it is part one exam or part two exam, it will be MCQ based 100 portion paper will be MCQ based in part one you will be having four hours to solve 100 questions with no negative marking and financial markets and products and valuation and risk management will be having 60 percent weightage in your exams and statistics that is quantitative analysis and foundation of risk management will be having 40% uh, weightage in your exams. In part two, you will be required to solve 80 questions in four hours and there will be no negative marking. Your market risk management, credit risk management, operational risk management in together carry 60% weightage and liquidity and treasury risk management, risk management and investment management and current issues in financial market in total carry 40% weightage, right? And the pass percentages are really high in these exams. You can expect pass percentages for both part one and part two, somewhere around 50%. So the point which I'm trying to highlight here is that if you study dedicatedly, if you study sincerely, it is not like chartered accountancy exams or say civil services exams where the probability of you not clearing the exams is also very high even if you have prepared very sincerely very dedicatedly it's not the case here if you study you will clear if you don't study you will not clear right now let us talk about job profiles that what are the career avenues that you can explore after clearing your frm exams so you can be a financial risk manager a financial risk analyst you can go to risk auditing, you can go for risk consultancy, you can go to rating agencies for jobs, you can go to wealth management, you can go to investment banking, you can go for trading, especially algo trading, you can go for enterprise risk management, you can go for operational risk management, you can go for risk modeling, market risk management, risk analytics, basal professional, especially the role of FRM in banking industry is very wide. So you can be a basal professional, you can go for liquidity risk management, you can go to fintech and so many more, do more domains. See, it is a very fast growing industry. The point here is that what you can bring to the table, the industry is ready to pay you as much as you want. The question is, do you have the skills to grab that, right? Now let us move ahead and let us talk about the top employers. So all around the world, there is requirement for FRM professionals. Top, uh, top employers around the world include ICBC, Bank of China, HSBC, Agricultural Bank of China, Citigroup, KPMG, Deutsche Bank, Credit Suisse, UBS, PwC, and much more. So in India, specifically, you can look for HDFC, you can go to Edelweisses, Moody's, S&P, Fitch Ratings, you can go to Citigroup, KPMG, EY, ICICI, SBI. 
so many employers are there especially you can go to bank because now they understand after say uh, 2008 fiasco then pnb fiasco then yes bank fiasco they understand the importance of risk management you can go to various banks the employment opportunities are very very wide the point is here again that what you can bring to the table do you have the required skills right now let us talk about the salary the most important part for which you are here if so here is a screenshot from pay scale see if you are just starting after clearing your part one or maybe part two you'll start as an analyst so your starting package your starting salary will be somewhere around six to eight lakh rupees depending upon the profile that you are entering right and eventually as your career progresses it will be somewhere around 12 lakh rupees and obviously it will go higher this is the average salary right i have taken one more screenshot from another website called as jobted it is also showing on similar lines if you are just starting if you are just starting after clearing part one your salary will be somewhere around four and a half lakhs four lakhs five lakhs eventually when you, when you clear your part two exams when you are much more experienced then your average salary is somewhere around 12 lakhs the data from two different websites is almost similar so based on these two screenshots from very different websites you can have understanding of what kind of payments you can uh, like think of after clearing frm part one and part two exams it is somewhere close to one lakh rupees per month and eventually this will also increase right your career is not going to stuck at 12 lakh rupees per annum it will increase okay towards the end now comes the question how the wall street school can help you remember i was talking about having skin in the game what skills you can bring to the table so we can help you to ace your frm exams based on our cumulative experience of teaching thousands of candidates over the years the best industry professionals are teaching you frm at the wall street school if in case you want to know more you can find the link in description the wallstreetschool.com or reach out to us in the comment section below thank you for watching we'll see you in the next video